Hello, you have tuned in to ThinkTech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture, and we're broadcasting live, and after that forever YouTubed, from our tropical rainforest, jungle, mountain, island of Oahu, Hawaii. And um, the next picture shows us that there's a challenge to that, because increasingly uh, our foothills of our forested mountains uh, look like that. So the inherent uh, uh, sort of dilemma and related uh, potential, uh, we're going to bring in a very special guest today all the way across the neighboring continent. And that's number uh, three, please. Uh, that's Pat Donahue. Uh, welcome, Pat. Uh, great welcome. to have you on the show. And, and Pat is actually from a place where um, our producer, Zuri, is a native from. And that is from where, Pat? Where are you broadcasting from? We're broadcasting from Duluth, Minnesota. It's, awesome. It's, uh, it, it's, for the visual, it's at the, we're at the head of the lakes. We're at the head of the Great Lakes. We're the most western ocean-going port uh, in the continent of the United States. All right. And as the audience can read under your name just a second ago, um, I call you more casually the Master Woodcook. And, but more officially, you're a director of what institution and well, what well, capacity, I, we, Pat? I work, I work at the University of Minnesota Duluth. Our, 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 our organization has been recently uh, updated our name. We, uh, we're, we're currently the Wood Products and Bioeconomy Initiative. Mm -hmm. And I'm a program manager within of Wood Products within that, in, in that initiative. And yes, I, I've, been, I've been exploring and, and developing and uh, trying to perfect the art of wood cooking for um, the last 15 years. Awesome. And just walk through a little bit number four, a little bit of the history of the islands here, which uh, originally were heavily wooded until uh, early in the 1800s. Uh, the Chinese got really interested in a specific wood, which is sandalwood, and they got crazy about it. And uh, Hawaiians got interested in making a deal and they sold it all. Uh, at least the Chinese made beautiful shrines out of it. But uh, sandalwood is gone. And so is the next picture. Koa wood is an indigenous wood species. There's very little left, maybe enough, and even that's questionable for little accessories like this one here. So number six is us having a, a, a crazy um, increase in population here to be continued. We're short on 60,000 uh, housing units, and that's the predominant way we're building. This is our students checking out one of the builders, uh, building up their track homes, uh, stick framed, and basically then sheathed, um, all um, coming shipped in from the Pacific Northwest, all termite treated there, so there's no locality there's no specificity of, of our culture and, um, and, and, in fact, business anymore here. So we, we go to number seven. Uh, there's, a there's two shows way back in the old urban transcendence days that we refer to. And the one of them is here with one of the leading scientists in Germany at the Institute of Wood Technology with whom I've been working ever since. And that would be picture eight, uh, one and a half decades ago where um, our uh, family business was in a very exclusive way case studying in this field of thermally modified timber. The abbreviation we're going to be using from now is TMT, and that's explosive because that's also uh, to be uh, understood here as the telescope up on Mauna Kea. So this is not it. This is different here. And we've been uh, case studying that, and our producer will uh, walk us through here uh, through uh, 10 images where we've been testing it through different typologies, starting with education, like school in this case here, uh, coming up kindergartens, coming up transit-oriented uh, multi-story uh, dwellings, uh, down to single-family residences, uh, down to uh, coffee shops and, and bakery stores. And uh, these projects have been, uh, you know, test, uh, stood with the, the test of time, Especially the very first uh, project, um, uh, the Elmazi School is now 15 years young or old. And in these pictures, uh, you see uh, it's in its original condition, but more importantly, how it's been holding up uh, over, over, the, over the times, which is very important. You have a very great project coming up, which is a museum in Minnesota, and they have honored you in basically doing the rain screen with uh, thermally modified pine, as I read, Pat. So the Elmazi right. School is a great 
post-occupancy evaluation, evidence-based design case study to look at and to see how that stuff is actually holding up, right? But yeah. while uh, we're walking through the images, please, uh, in, in a uh, short uh, summary, tell us when you first uh, got in touch with TMT, once you got hooked, and um, ever since you got addicted by it, and, and tell us a little bit about that, your background, Pat. Uh, great. Thank you very much. Um, back in 2001, I was approached by the Finnish government. Uh, they, they had uh, de been developing this technology since 1994 and they wanted to export the, not only their wood products but they also wanted to export their technology um, and so they contracted with me to help them for several years go out and, and uh, attend trade shows and, and basically just be the um, early adopter storyteller and I, and I did that for several years and in that I, I really gained a lot of knowledge but I also gained a lot of contacts in a great network of, of producers around the world and, and that that in itself led me to believe that this was a um, the, the technology uh, one of the biggest advantages of a technology is it, it, it renders the wood hydrophobic mm -hmm. uh, it's what wood loves water after cooking wood you you may you render it so it doesn't love water and if you don't have a water as part of the formula all of a sudden you, you find a much more durable product. It's much more dimensionally stable, decay resistant, and, um, and it does add a, a, a nice uh, umber brown color to it. Yeah, uh, and you do that, that's what we already previewed in number three, which we could bring this back. You do this in a kiln where the oxygen is sort of taken out, so there's not, you know, oxygen is going to fire up the wood and it's going to be, you know, com of combustible nature, so you make sure you can cook it, you can, you can burn it uh, to a point just before it catches fire and goes away. Is that correct? Right. There, there's, a, there's a couple of ways that, that you, there's a couple of technologies. In fact, I think there's about eight technologies worldwide. In general, you, you, um, you cook the wood up to uh, a combustion level, but you do it in an oxygen-starved environment so it doesn't ignite. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the, my preferred method is using the uh, autoclave method. I, I often tell people a, a, simply, a simple analogy is um, simple analogy is to a uh, convection oven is a more standard method where we use a pressure cooker method. Um, and again, they, they both are starve the oxygen and, and allow us to uh, achieve that that um, uh, cooked wood. Mm -hmm. um, effect in, in a relatively short period of time. Yeah, and uh, maybe a short historic preview because, um, you know, many, most things in, you know, in life have been around for a while. So we can say that many indigenous cultures have sort of more by trial and error uh, found out. Once they invented fire, they were holding wood into fire and at some point, you know, they took it out before it caught fire and they experienced that. So. The Northern European countries, the Vikings have sort of charred, which is slightly different, but somehow similar, the, the exteriors of their uh, wood, wood boats with that. Uh, the Europeans, like, like our ancestors, have treated their oak uh, pile foundations for buildings. Coming closer to uh, us, and actually you being in uh, a Native uh, American, talking about a producer and, you know, a country is, is that the eras of the peaks of, uh, you know, their, their weapons, the Native Americans have done that to harden and, and improve uh, the peak of their era, uh, of their bows. And, uh, and coming to us here closer is where we're dominated by Asian culture um, and informed in the best way. Uh, the Japanese have done that and are still doing that to their teacups. And, and so it's a technology that's been indigenously invented and then somewhere in the 1930s if I'm not mistaken uh, you guys and me uh, Americans and Germans have picked up on it and uh, tried to develop in an industrial commercial scale but the war killed that and the uh, chemical industry and plastic took over 
And, and then you connected the dots earlier where the Scandinavians basically picked it up again and Stora Enso and Stellac Wood as some of the largest paper and, and wood manufacturers have brought it to a, raj, a rather large scale. And in fact, the very first two projects, first was a Stellac uh, Wood uh, application and the second one was Stora Enso. Um, if, if we can go to a picture uh, number 16, and, and talk about um, sort of this uh, analogy of, of, we can say, cooking wood. This was baking wood. So we were consulting uh, National Organization of Bakery Stores how to innovate uh, their, their tradition. And so we used thermally modified pine here as to uh, create these, uh, these showcases and shelves in the back. And uh, number 17 is a coffee shop. where so, so we made the analogy of roasting beans and roasting wood. And the uh, next picture, number 18, gets us too closer to us in Hawaii because we actually have a small but exclusive coffee culture here and, and business. So, th th so there's another analogy. And number 19 basically is the point where we met Pet, right? At some point, we were doing things on our own, not even knowing about each other. But here is uh, someone that we had on the show uh, a couple of shows ago, uh, Matt DeBoer, who was one of the first ones. And also, uh, when you guys look close to the screen, I always credit the manufacturer, the product of the wood. This was Cambia wood. So he was one of the first ones who exemplified, demonstrated it in a high architectural excellence way. And somewhere at that point, um, we met uh, Pat. And you very uh, soon after that initiated the very first um, uh, American, North American TMT Forum in Princeton, West Virginia, right? Right. And shortly after that, was, that was a really a pivot because shortly after that, uh, we, were, we were contacted by others who had similar interests in, from the uh, U.S. and the Canadian side. And we were able to execute a, a project that ended in, in uh, 2014 with a national standard a uh, performance standard, a guidance standard written and published in the uh, American Wood Protection Association uh, mm -hmm. book of standards. So yeah. we, yeah. we, and that was real, that's really a pivot because now we have a, we have a place, we, ha we have a, a architectural standard that we can refer um, designers to. Exactly. Great. And um, if we can maybe, I, I hold this piece here a little bit into the camera here. This is a, 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 a part of a branch which you gave me uh, many years ago, and it, it demonstrates a pretty a cool and, and obvious how this works that actually different to a previous more chemical pressure treatment systems were based upon the uh, sort of um, you know, system, you only get into the wood to a certain depth. Whereas this one here, if you cook it long enough, just like another analogy is obviously your bread or is your cake, right? If you bake it all the way through, which you better do with a cake, you get it all the way through, which dough has to get to be delicious. And so the wood is. So you can do this either with even a piece of a, you know, slice of a trunk or a slice of a branch. So you can process the wood before you cut it into boards and lumber or you can already cut it into pieces. And we should also mention that uh, one, you talked about decay resistance against most uh, insects and, and chemical biological attacks, but also another advantage is that it makes the wood much more stable and, um, and sort of is resistant to bending, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really, it, it, it does affect the mechanical properties to, uh, to a certain degree, and it depends on the species. But one of the points that, that you, you touched on is its its uh, usefulness. It's the, the 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 technology not only can be uh, used to treat wood throughout the cross sections. It's really important that it it's um, species independent. Mm -hmm. Any species could work. Mm -hmm. Where you know many of the chemical treating processes, a very limited number of species work, and the chemicals themselves really only penetrate the sapwood areas where mm -hmm. this is throughout the cross section. So it, it really is a, is, is a much more um, robust, uh, deep penetration. All right, we're gonna take a quick uh, one minute uh, commercial break here and then we're gonna be back with our master cook, Pat Donahue and his uh, uh, outlook on new Hawaii wood. See you in a minute. I've got the Beagle Sisters here with a healthy tip. We encourage you to enjoy the food you eat this holiday season and keep it local and healthy. Yeah. 
Eat the rainbow. Eat yeah. the rainbow. And if you need any produce, come to the Red Barn on the North Shore. Aloha. My name is John Waihe, and I actually had a small part to do with what's happening today. Served actually in public office. But if you don't already know that, here's a chance to learn more about what's happening in our state by joining me for Talk Story with John Waihe every other Monday. Thank you, and I look forward to your seeing us in the future. Aloha and Happy New Year. It's 2017. Please keep up with me on Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to talk about a clean and just energy future. Please join me on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. Mahalo. Welcome back to our master cook, Pat Donahue, uh, talking about the new Hawaii wood, which we're actually doing now. And we can bring in uh, number 20 as, as an image here. And so uh, with the huge demand in housing here, this is a project we showed a couple of shows um, ago. This is called Stratospheering. It's trying to make something, meaning dwelling housing, uh, from scratch. So something out of nothing because we're very limited in resources, which we already talked about. So this is using an abundant sort of more contemporary uh, building material, which is cargo steel slash shipping containers. But shipping containers get really, really hot uh, being exposed to the sun. And so we need to put a sunscreen on. And the sunscreen here is a TMT, thermally modified timber. But then the audience might say, well, wait a minute, didn't we just talk about there is no wood left on the island? And to the, uh, going to the next picture, that is true, certainly, but there is actually certain woods uh, at the very bottom right that uh, we have imported and they take over, they're invasive. And this is Albicia as one species. It's very, uh, it's very brittle, so when storms come, they come down and block the roads and they take over and, 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 and suppress native species. So we want to get rid of them and we can reuse them. And as a, as a sunscreen where there's no structural integrity uh, demanded, we can, we can very well uh, work with that. So that would be one application. Yeah, I, I would think that sunscreen is great application. Great, because it's already pre-cooked, so it's like, you know, it's, it's pre-aged. So it would do a good job. The next picture is another project that we keep promoting, which is Primitiva, which is our proletarian people power tower, and that's number 22 here, an inside view, where this time not on the outside, but on the inside. Uh, these, which we call slices of paradise, are going to be basically master carpentered uh, out of uh, a native species. There's also monkey pot, is another invasive species here that we can certainly repurpose uh, for that matter. Number uh, 23 is exciting. That's, that was our start. We've worked together, Pat, for some years. Uh, all my, all, you know, you accompanied my journey from the Midwest, fellow Midwestern, and through the uh, hot, arid uh, in times in, in Arizona, through here in Hawaii. And that was the beginning in Hawaii, where we both uh, had, with our student team, developed, uh, and all these projects here that I showed are uh, teamwork with the emerging generation here. This was the H home, uh, very similar to research you're doing on the side, trying to find, uh, uh, and that would be a show on his own, which you probably should do about indigenous uh, contemporary dwelling. This is for Hawaiians here. And uh, the next picture is, whereas uh, the frame might be out of concrete, but number 24, is going to show us uh, something else at the very top. And you started out with solid timber team teeing that, but then you moved on to what, which we see here, Pat? Well, well we, we, we were able to get a National Science Foundation grant to explore using TMT and engineered wood products. Mm -hmm. And uh, we definitely think, and especially in the tropical areas, uh, you're going to need panel products. And we believe this renders the, uh, a, a very unique panel product where you could have a borate treated, um, TMT treated piece of OSB. So uh, what's kind of a, what we can take a commodity, generic commodity, and we can convert it into a, a, a specially durable material for the, for the tropical areas. I love how you said that. I would say it more uh, provocatively. I said the most sort of bastardized and, and uncultured piece of American engineering in wood, which is oriented at straight board, where you take, you don't trust wood anymore, you chip it down to shavings and then you throw it into glue and so it becomes sort of wood in slavery, right? But you take that piece and I have a 
I have that actual piece here, and I think it works pretty good in the light here. You see that almost velvety glow. So it looks very cheap and very sort of low, low end through this magic process, which, by the way, is using nothing but uh, heat, right? So we're not, there's no chemical, there's nothing, it's just heat. So it's an all natural the process. Yeah, the basic process is just uh, heating in a controlled environment. And I acquired here a precious piece of koa, and so, you know, you can see this like, you know, this could be an evolution. This is not around anymore. It's done. It's cut down. It doesn't grow back that fast. So we can basically substitute that with something that we create here, right? And if we go back to the picture 24, the most delicate uh, thing is always that people say, well, okay, you're, you're talking, you're all good, you're all ecological, you're all healthy but you got to basically use energy to make that. So how good is that? So what do we say about that as an answer, Pat? Yeah, I mean, it's the, the, the energy component is, is a real part of this. And, and, and in, a, in, a production, in a production scenario, you, 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 you know, wood products, and that's the advantage that wood product industry has, typically there's a lot of waste wood, and typically people would use the waste wood for the base heat. And we try and minimize the amount of intense heat that we use in, in the process. And that, again, that's why I like the closed system because the, 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 the need for the intense heat is at a shorter duration and it's a less energy impact. But mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's, it's something I think in the future we can find other alternatives for this. Um, but at this point, you're, you're still, it, it, it is a process heat mm -hmm. um, project. So. We are going to use some energy, but yeah. we, I think if you compare that versus the energy used to create and produce and ship chemicals, I think we have a good story. Exactly. And because of its compellingness, the, going back to the picture 24, the middle row is provocatively saying, what if we you know, talk to Pele, who is the goddess of the volcano, and we, we're going to make a deal with her and saying, why don't we use your heat? Um, and, and this is like, you know, if there's some fundamentally uh, originated, um, you know, resistance, just like to the other TMT, by the way, the telescope, uh, then we could negotiate with a goddess and the gods of wind and the water uh, and the ocean, right? So there's so many multi multitude of, of renewable energy sources on our islands here. So it should be no problem. Uh, we're going to show two more projects. Number 25 is, is just sort of out of the creator's um, box. Uh, these are our most recent uh, emerging talents here. This is Chiu Hyung uh, Park and a preview of his The Ark Project here, uh, creating the Forester's Home, uh, potentially for the island and beyond, also back uh, in his native Korea where he's from. And number 26 is, uh, is what's also a permanent uh, background picture here. This is uh, Nick Civitano uh, coming to say, I want to build the most healthy and the most affordable home. And he's uh, pairing a TMT as, as much as Tiu Hyung is with an innovative technology that's uh, called cross uh, nail timber, which we can't cover in this show. So we're going to have to make another show about that one. But for these here, um, I have, and Nick was building this out of actual wood samples, and um, I hold this here in my hand. This here is also an abundant resource on the big island. That's eucalyptus that someone had planted and thought make a big buck, but it didn't work out because he didn't estimate the shipping cost correctly. So that's how he sent it to you guys, and that's how it came out. So once again, an absolutely uh, cultivation for, of a personal piece. I know you like it'll be a different show. But I, I, I really do believe combining these technologies, TMT technologies with cross-laminated uh, timber technology for yeah. homes in Hawaii using uh, plantation growing eucalyptus has a bright future. Perfect. Or we have another wood species. We never run out of ideas here. This is ironwood, also a very abundant, not very liked uh, wood species. That's how it looks like in real. That's how you make it look once you uh, applied your master cook um, uh, skills, Pat. We're getting close to the end of the show, but not uh, before sharing uh, your biggest dream, and that has to do with the ocean. And we got to squeeze in that one thing, you know, once TMT treated, most insects and termites and uh, most other things other than termites don't like the wood, but termites 
are still uh, attracted to it. So we might have to apply one last step, which is uh, seawater curing, as we say, which is our experimentation with with, uh, with borating, a, a natural way of borating. And we get to the end of the show, so we can't touch on that, but I want to conclude with this last picture, which is your ultimate dream here for us in Hawaii. What is that? Uh, the, the, uh, a thermally modified surfboard. Exactly, exactly. No, it's a, 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 a hydrophobic material that will just keep me afloat. And it keeps you afloat and it keeps the board on float because once again, in a nutshell, we extract the, the crystal water out of the cell, right? And that's an irreversible process. That's the architect sort of uh, dilettantly speaking. And, and that way it, it will be lighter, right? And it will float better. And so it's an ideal material for so many applications that we unfortunately don't have time to talk about anymore. But uh, this was a good introduction and more to come. Thank you, Mr. A New Hawaii Woodmaster Cook. Uh, highly appreciated talking to us and giving us hope that this could be a potential material for our future demands. Uh, thank you very much. I, I do appreciate it. Thank Have you a nice evening. You too, and thank you for staying up so late uh, back in the beautiful heartland. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.